Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at how to make a, a map in R using the packages OpenStreetMap and PrettyMapR. So I'm just going to load those packages now using the library function, loading them as a library uh, of other functions which will enable us to create maps. Okay, we can see the output down the bottom. Okay, so we've got one called OpenStreetMap which enables us to pull maps from uh, servers uh, on the internet and pretty map R which enables us to make nice annotations easily. Now what we want is uh, some coordinates. We want the northwest and southeast corners of the map and probably the easiest way to do that is to go to Google Maps and we will for the purposes of this exercise zoom in on UWA and see if we can make a map of that. So and okay that's probably close enough there and let's say that we want um, the colleges as well so we're gonna select a top left or northwest coordinate there and if we just click on the Google map we get some coordinates uh, it tells us where we is but where we are Grammar Andrew, um, and we can enter those values into our OpenStreetMap. Now let's see if it's the okay. That's not working, so we're going to have to remember them. Maybe it is. No. Okay. So minus thirty-one point nine seven three. Remember we're in the southern hemisphere, so the latitudes are negative and one one five point eight one two. Oops. Okay, and the southeast corner we're gonna choose again. Uh, we'll get rid of that and we'll go right down to the bottom of campus and let's have a nice looking map with Pelican Point in there as well. So thirty one point nine eight eight. And 115.829, give or take. Okay, so we have to run those, of course, to put those vectors of coordinates into each object northwest longitude, latitude, and southeast longitude, latitude. So we'll do that, uh, and then um, we can create uh, a a map object and I'm going to call it uwa.osm and we'll make sure we're using uwa instead of sv for Smiths very all, all the time. Uh, I'm going to make that the default value osm and we can now uh, run that. Right. So if we run that we create this object here uwa.osm which contains a map in it um, and it will have the open street map locator coordinates in it when then we need to convert it okay so run you can notice it, it takes a little while to pull all the map data off the server and it creates quite a large object within your uh, workspace Have a minute at the stage if we misspecify coordinates or do uh, something else, else wrong, we will get an error message. But let's have a look. So you, you know, it's actually 5.1 megabytes in size. Uh, it says large open street map object, so that's it there. But we want to make another one, okay? So our UWA map, we're going to use the function open proj, so that uh, changes the projection to something that we specify. We've got an extra comma in there that not going to do good. And so the projection that I'm specifying. Um, is in uh, a specific format, so we need to follow this exactly uh, in quotes plus uh, PROJ equals UTM plus zone equals 50, that's the UTM zone we're in, and plus we need to specify southern hemisphere. So we run that and we get a map, hopefully, in UTM coordinates. Okay, so that's run uh, and it's there in our list of objects in the environment. Okay, so if we set up our graphics parameters, then uh, we should be able to plot our UWA, right? And the 
this code here is taken from the PowerPoint file that you will have available to you uh, and the notes in that so I'm just taking the generic code from there and uh, putting some stuff in to help you create the map. Alright, let's go back to our studio and let's make our graphics window a bit bigger so it can fit the map in and run that. So we get our map and you can see that it covers the UWA campus quite nicely. And if we you know, made it a bit bigger perhaps we could see a bit more detail. Um, yeah, there's a limit to how big you can make them because we're limited by the resolution of the map tiles themselves. Okay, if we include more tiles, uh, so remember that we had a minimum number of tiles of 12, we can make that bigger if we want to get more detail, but then of course the text will be smaller, so there's a bit of a compromise there. Uh, and we might want to add some axes to that. Make the bottom axis, so it's axis 1, so remember 1, 2, 3, 4, always an R, whatever type of plot we're doing, and a map is just really plot. Okay, so actually I should be putting these things in our script file. Okay, uh, so we've got UTM coordinates, and likewise we can make axis 2, and we run that, so we get an axis. Now you notice that the axes are now offset a bit from the sides of the plot, so uh, you need to do a m bit of manual tidying up to get them as close as possible. And you also notice that the UTM conversion means the map is not quite square within the coordinates, and that'll be easy to see once we put a box on, which we can do. Okay, so uh, just the default box, we'll run that. And you can see that the map's not quite square in the coordinates, and that's because uh, the UTM zones are rectangles, whereas the slices of the earth are more like slices of an orange, they taper towards the poles. So depending on where we are in that, we get a tilt for the map. Okay, So we're, we're doing reasonably well, uh, but we should put some additional stuff on the map. Okay, And that would include some indication of what the coordinate system is. So we're going to use the mText function to produce axis labels. So we want side, so let's make it side equals y is 1, uh, which means x-axis conventionally. Let's space it out from the margin a bit, so we'll make it perhaps two lines out. Line equals 2, uh, and text, oops, we didn't actually want brackets around that. Text equals um, that's our easting on the x-axis, and that's UTM zone 50 with units of meters. There's a nice complete axis tile for us, and let's make it a bit bigger. CX equals 2, oops, 12 would be a bit too much, and we'll make it bold, font equals 2. Right, so if we run that, looks like we made it too big, okay? so. I was going to make it 1.2, wasn't I? So let's run the whole thing again so we don't over plot anything. Much nicer. Okay, so let's copy and paste that, change the side to 2, change easting to <coughs> northern, run that, and we've got a reasonably presentable map now. There's just a couple of things missing that I would put on. So if you've read the PDF, you'll notice that we can use the functions within pretty map R to put on the other necessary map items. So we're going to add north arrow and I'll just use the default version of that. There it goes. Not too shabby. And I'm going to add um, a scale bar. Okay. So now, with the scale bar, we're going to need to specify something. Uh, so let's go back to my version of a PowerPoint document. Sorry about these little interruptions that keep popping up because we remember that there's a little code for the 
plot. Okay, adding scale there. Blah blah. Okay, I think it was on this page. So we're gonna. So that must be on the next one. This one here, plot EPSG. That's the code we need to remember because that corresponds to UTM zone 50. Plot EPSG equals 28350. So 350, just. There we go. So if we run that now, we get a scale bar in the corner. Um, there's a lot of flexibility within these functions to customize things, particularly the scale bar. So if we hold our cursor over there, we get all the little help things that come up. So you can change things like um, the width intervals and units and whereabouts the scale bar plots in relation to the, uh, the map space, the color, line thickness, uh, and so on. So you can fiddle around with that, but the default one usually works quite well. It's designed to occupy a certain part of the plot, that being too obtrusive, but showing necessary information. So th that's pretty much how we do it. Now, the, the other things that you folks will be wanting to do is to probably add some points to it, some data. And so I don't have any points for UWA uh, right here on me, but we can use the points function, which is just a base graphics function. Uh, and just put a couple of vectors in. So let's, uh, f just to show the example, we're going to make our x values um, at, let's say, we'll put them exactly where the tick labels are. So we'll make 388. Oops, better do that properly. And uh, 388500. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, so those are our x values. We'll make another vector of y values and we'll put three in there too. Uh, just on six, four, six, oh, five hundred. Six, four, six, one, zero, zero, zero. And of course, six, four, six, one, five hundred. And make them so we can see them. So color equals red, always good. And uh, plot character equals, good one is probably plot character 16, a filled circle. Let's see how we go if we run that. There they are, those points right there. Now that's a pretty ordinary sort of example. Um, but you get the idea. So if you've got a data set with Eastings and Northings in it, then that's what you would plot using the points function on the graph. And the other things that we can do if you really want to, and you need to do this before you put the, uh, the north arrow and scale bar on, is uh, pop on a grid. Okay, so you can accept the default one. I can't remember what that like looks like. It looks like nothing. Uh, oh, it has actually plotted the very, very, very faint grey. So we probably want to change the colour of that. And we'll just make the colour equals. And let's make it really obvious. Let's make it purple. And you can change the line types and things. And just okay, so you get the idea. So obviously it's plotted over some of the things. If we don't want it to do that, then we need to plot the whole lot again. And there we have it, okay, so we've got the grid behind our graph items, and of course we told R to be plotting right on the intersection of grid lines uh, by choosing the coordinates that were already on the axis. Alright, so that, that's a, a quick and dirty introduction by way of video to maps using uh, R Studio and the packages OpenStreetMap and PrettyMap R. Okay.